Uh, so I'm going to be teaching you how to do the simple lace edging. Um, I'm going to do mine on a, I think it's a napkin or a tea towel, um, but it's just going to be a simple edging. Um, you can do it on the end of a skirt or on uh, a tablecloth or really anything, any scrap cloth that you have lying around that you would like to add um, some needle tatting to. You can always take and practice uh, on any cloth. Um, so for your materials, you're going to need some type of thread. I recommend crochet cord in a size 10. Um, that's usually the best. I have um, my little embroidery scissors. Um, the thread that I'm going to be using, uh, the material that I'm stitching to, and of course a needle. I am using a tapestry needle. If you're doing more elaborate um, lace work, then you're going to want to use something like a doll needle that's really long. Um, I prefer a really sharp needle so I can get in between all of the stitches. Um, however, you can take and use a dull needle uh, to begin with, especially if you're really prone to pricking yourself. Um, that should help out with that. Alright, so I'm going to take and show you how to thread your needle. You're going to need to take your thread and, of course, your needle. You're going to want to take and um, hold your thread in whatever your non-dominant hand is and your needle in your dominant hand. And you're going to line your string up with your um, eye of your needle. Mine, as you can see, is really big, so that's going to work out very easily for me. I can thread it easier. Um, and then you just take and slide it right on through like that. Um, I'm luckily really good at threading needles, so it works out fine for me. Um, and then you just have to leave a small tail on it like that, and I don't know, about six, seven inches. You've accomplished a day, so let's get started. You're going to want to take and thread, um, push your needle through the corner of the fabric, and bring your thread through um, until you have a decent amount on one side. You don't want too much because it's uh, prone to twist and tangle and stuff. You can fix that by using beeswax, which I don't have with me today, so you can take and just pull out the amount you need and then take uh, the tail on the back and that needs to measure the length of your edge that you're going to be stitching on today plus about three inches give or take. So I'm going to pinch it here and I'm going to take and grab my thread if I can get a hold of it and then I'm going to take and hold it against the edge and just slide it along until I get to the end that way I can see um, how much thread I need just like that. And I've got the tail of one of my pre-done ends over there uh, in the way. Alright, and then Alright, so there's my end, and then I have about three or four inches, give or take, on the end, which is perfect. That's all I needed. Um, Alright, so let's get back up to our other end here, and now what you're going to do, you're going to want to make sure you tie it off, because this back thread is going to be your working thread, uh, your foundation thread, and your front uh, thread is going to be your working thread that's attached to the needle. All right, so you're going to want to take and go back through your fabric like so. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically create a knot. So you're going to go back through your loop here. That way that you are going to create a single knot. And then, so you're going to take and go through a second time and we're going to make a double knot. Um, and then you're just going to gently pull that tight, making sure that it doesn't get tangled in the process. Because um, if you catch the wrong thread, you know, it could eh, get stuck. So then you're going to give that a nice tug, and it's nice and tight, so your string is not going to slide back and forth. So you have your um, foundation thread on the back and your working thread on the front. However, make sure that you keep your foundation thread um, separate from your working thread. You don't want to lay down your work, get your needle unthreaded, and then accidentally thread up the wrong one because it's going to um, make your work uh, turn out kind of funky. So yeah, I'm going to leave that laying back there, and I'm going to keep my working thread up here. I like to make sure my stitches like anchor every about a quarter inch or so. Um, and then this is how you do a buttonhole stitch. You just take and wrap your um, 
thread under uh, the back side of the needle and then under the top side of the needle and give it a pull and that makes it a nice tight um, buttonhole stitch. And the reason I'm showing you this is because there is a technique where you, um, what's called cast a stitch, where you take and do a whole line of these. That way that it, um, you can take and stitch on to that instead of having your working thread out behind. I personally don't like this because it's um, harder for me to stitch onto because they, um, the needle has to work in such a small confined space. Um, and if you take and slip up and forget to do your buttonhole the right way, your uh, threads will slide around and it, it's just a mess. I prefer to do it the other way, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. Um, you see how that thread just kind of slips off of there. Um, so let's take and, um, yeah, let's go ahead and take these out because I'm not gonna use that today. And so I'm just gonna work my needle under there and just slide out these stitches. They're really easy to take and um, pull out. Um, so you can just slip your needle under there like that and then just let the tail come all the way through. And then of course you have to rethread your needle to do, to do it again. So once again, you just take and line it up with your eye and just boop, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do um, the way that I like to do it. So you're gonna to wanna to take your um, foundation thread and wrap it over your finger like that. And you're gonna kinda of control the tension with your pinky. Um, so you can wrap it around like this or you can kind of pinch it with your finger and that kinda of helps you hold it tight. Just make sure you only have a little bit of a distance between your fingers. And notice how I'm holding my work with my thumb and my middle finger. Um, you're also going to be taking and using those fingers to pinch your um, stitches in just a second. So for your stitches, you go over the top of your um, foundation thread with your needle, and you're going to go underneath it, and it's going to kind of create a loop, and you're going to pull it through that loop, and that's going to create a stitch. It's kind of like a half hitch. And then you're going to take and give that a good tug, and you're going to make sure it gets lined up, make sure it doesn't get twisted again. Um, but see how it'll slide down right there like that, and then you're gonna pinch it between your two fingers there, and then you're gonna go over, under, and through. All right, so you're gonna do that, um, and for this first row of loops that you're getting ready to make, I'm gonna do 13 of them um, on each loop before I anchor it down again, um, and this is just gonna create a simple little scalloped edge, um, and then we'll add on to that later but you're gonna do 13 stitches, making sure that they're nice and tight and everything keep them pinched between your fingers, that way that they don't slide around. Because um, as you can see, they're just loose little loops of thread and they will slide and they'll loosen up and tighten up. Um, so to keep that tension, you just keep it pinched between your fingers. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to anchor it down. Um, All right, so I have a knot in my thread. This happens sometimes. It happens whenever you're pulling stuff through. It can get twisted and it'll catch on itself. You just take your needle and you're gonna have to pick apart the knot. Um, and you just slide your needle in there like that and you kinda just have to work with it, try to pull the threads apart. And sometimes pulling on the loop helps like it did there. Um, but you're gonna have to get a hold of it and just kinda pull it apart until it comes loose like that. And then you're ready to go again. 
Now, if you take and, um, if you take and have an issue with it constantly tangling, then you can just take and unthread your needle and then just run your finger, your thumb and your middle finger down the length of the thread a few times and that'll pull out the um, things. But anyway, right here I'm showing you how to anchor your um, stitches. So you can take and uh, get that worked down. Uh, you just stitch through and pull and it'll pull your loop over. And then you're gonna take and thread back through the same stitch and you're gonna tie um, a knot. You just go around it two times and then make sure your loop doesn't get caught and then just give it a pull and it's gonna permanently knot it down to your um, work here. And then there's your first little loop. And it has the 13 stitches, like I said. Um, and now we're gonna take and start our second loop. So for that, you're just gonna take and do the exact same thing. You're gonna take and stitch through again and you're gonna wanna take and continue this the entire length of your um, work. So again, you take and you're gonna start your, you're gonna pull your tension and then you're gonna take and start your um, stitches. So you're gonna take and come through, under, through, I mean over, under, through, and pinch it, and over, under, through, if I can get it to go, there we go. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get used to it, and I haven't been practicing, so. Um, and then give it a good tug and keep it pinched. And then you're gonna keep doing that, and you're gonna do, again, 13 stitches all the way down. You can increase or decrease the number of stitches in your loops. Um, I prefer, if you're gonna do multiple layers, to make sure it's odd numbers in your loops. That way that you can always attach the next layer to the middle of those um, loops because if you have the even number of stitches, then you're not gonna have a hole where you need one to stitch into for the next layer. So you're gonna continue this for the rest of your loop, and then you're gonna anchor it down uh, like I showed you before. So here you can kind of see, um, I'm a little bit off screen, but I'll come back on in just a second. There I am. Um, I'm showing you how these stitches slide around on the uh, foundation thread. If you're not careful, they can stretch out really, really far, or they can be pushed really, really tight, um, and they can easily twist. That's the reason you pinch them, to keep them from twisting and stretching out and everything. Um, but luckily, it's easily fixable if uh, you have a problem with that. Um, but also if you need to count your stitches, you can always stretch it out like this and count along your holes and you know how many stitches you're on. Um, it's very easy to lose count. Pull my tension tight again and let's over, under, through. I'm sorry I'm blocking the camera a little bit here and there and going off screen um, I'm using the iPad and it's kind of perched above my hand so it's really hard to see what I'm doing so we are gonna thread through here and we're gonna take and knot this down and give it a good tug and then we're gonna come back through that same stitch like I showed you before and then you're gonna wrap your tail around it twice and that's gonna take and give you a good secure knot and then give it a good pull and get it tied in. Make sure that loop doesn't get um, caught on the edge or on your other loop. Um, be very careful with it because you don't want it to get tangled. And then give it a tug and it should anchor down your loop. And now you're down to your two loops, just like that. Mine are a little bit off as far as size because you want to make sure that they're the same height, give or take. Um, now you can do patterns with tall and short ones the whole way down and then, you know, do it that way, but we need ours to be the same all the way across. Um, but you're going to repeat these same stitches over and over and over again the entire length down, and that'll be your first row. 
And so I'm going to unthread my needle here and I'm going to switch it around to the side that I've already done the first row on so that you can see what that looks like. Right there it is. Um, so that's like what the first row should look like, give or take. Um, that was the first thing I did, so they're a little bit uneven, but they, you know, they work. So now for the second row. This is what it's gonna end up looking like. Um, these stitches are basically what you did below, except for with a fancy thing on top called a pico. Um, this is a special kind of pico that goes uh, specifically for lace making. Um, regular picots have a little loop on top. These are kind of like a bullion stitch if any of you embroider. Um, it's kind of a ball of threads up top. So let me get my threads pulled out here so I can show you how to start. Um, what you're going to do, you're going to, when you first start at the edge, you're going to want to knot into the middle of that first loop um, into that middle stitch. And then you're going to take and do uh, your regular stitches like I showed you below. You're going to do six of those in a row, and then I'm going to show you how to do the pico when I get there in just a second. And then you'll do six more stitches, and then you'll anchor it down to the middle stitch on the next loop. Alright, so let's get this started. I'm going to grab my foundation thread and get it wrapped here. It's very easy to take and wrap it the wrong way. Um, I do it all the time, so especially when I haven't practiced. But you're going to do the same stitches like I said be uh, before. And pardon my handiwork, uh, camera work I mean. So you're going to take and go over, under, and through, and give it a good pull, and get it eh, unstuck, get it unstuck, <laughs> and pull that down. So this is how you're supposed to hold it and sometimes your needle slips out of your fingers, it's no big deal. Just make sure you get a hold of it and don't let anything loose. Um, can get frustrating sometimes though. And then you take and pull your uh, loops down like I said. You're going to do six of these regular stitches over, under, and through. Now you could also take and just keep building up the same simple arches that we had below. Um, but for this, you're gonna take and uh, once you get to your six stitches, you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna put it inside of that last stitch that you did. And you're only gonna pull the needle about halfway through that way that you still have um, a length on the front, but you're gonna wanna take and be able to wrap thread around it. So you're gonna do it just like that. You're gonna take your working thread like this and you're gonna wrap it five times. One, two, three, pinch as you go, four, five, just like that. And then you're going to want to pull your needle through those stitches. Don't pinch it too hard, otherwise your uh, needle will get stuck. It's not that big of a deal, um, but it can make it more difficult to pull through. In just a minute, I'm going to show you how to do it without having to pinch it so hard, and it'll help um, because I've found that the harder you pinch it, the more large and kind of unruly your picots are. Um, and so you're going to take, and now that you've done the actual pico part, you're going to take and pull it down tight so it's snug against the bottom, and then you're going to stitch back through that same stitch you stitched through before. And you're going to pull your thread, and that's going to anchor your pico so it doesn't go sliding around on you. And then you're going to take and continue your regular si stitches and do six of them.
my stitches were piped down a little bit too tight, so I'm kind of pulling them out a little bit and finagling with them to make sure that they make the distance they need to. And then I'm going to put my needle through the middle stitch in the next loop. Just like... Sometimes it's hard if your stitches are a little bit tight like mine. Okay, so there you go. And then you're going to take and pull it through and you're going to anchor it the exact same way that you did uh, on the row below. Make sure your loops don't get caught on each other and give it a good tug. And then you're going to want to take and anchor it again. You're going to stitch back through that same stitch. And you're going to take and wrap your needle. One, two. And then, and I unwrapped one because I don't know why. But you're going to wrap it twice and do a double knot and then give it a good tug. And you're going to um, make sure your loops don't get caught again. And then give it a good tug and it's going to anchor itself down to the middle of that loop now. And now you have how to make that first that nice outward edge with the little picots and everything. Um, and if you don't get your loop on there right, the reason that you do two loops around is so that you don't have a single knot because they will slip if you're not careful. Um, as you can see, I keep having to finagle with this one because it's not tight like it's supposed to be and that's because I didn't wrap it twice. I unwrapped that one um, because I was being silly. So you're gonna take and continue that the entire way down. You're gonna take and do your uh, six stitches, then your five loop pico, and then your six stitches again. And then you just continue down. And you're gonna keep doing that the entire way across. And now I've got another knot here. Um, this one I'm going to have to pick out really, really carefully because it's actually tangled on both threads at the same time. Um, so give me just a second here. So I've made a boo-boo and stitched the wrong way, so I'm going to stitch back through and undo what I've just done. And that's how simple it is to fix a mistake, is just to take and go back and redo it. Some things are a little bit harder to reverse than others, but the general thing is you kind of jump both feet first and just kind of dive into it. Alright, so we're going to do our pico again, so you're going to take and push your needle about halfway through. And you're going to wrap one, two, three, four, five. Now, you don't necessarily have to pinch your threads because watch what's going to happen. If you don't pinch them, they come down really tight on their own. Um, you just kind of get them pulled tight like that and it's going to look funny and then you just pull them down. And they kind of nest the exact same way that they would have before. Um, 
Some people like to pinch them, some people don't. It just kind of depends on the person that's making the lace. Me personally, I am fine not pinching it until after I get it pulled down tight. That way it doesn't do anything funky. And then you just continue with your six stitches. And make sure you don't go under the loop. Make sure you go through that center stitch. Otherwise, it's going to shift around on you as you get it done. Um, and you may be wondering, like, what about the corner? Um, there's two ways that you can do this. Um, either you can account for the width of the corner and add a few stitches into a loop and just continue your band the entire way around the corner. Um, and do the same thing for the next um, row as well. You just add in stitches evenly on each side of the pico. Um, so if you only need two stitches then you would just add one to each side of the pico. Um, so you can do it that way and that just makes it a very simple edging um, all the way around. No special corners or anything. Or you can do something special in the corner and do a... it's kind of like those the second set of loops, the second row. Um, but you would take and anchor it to the corner and then you're going to chain 20 and you're going to stop along the way um, and anchor it to the side closest to the side that you're working um, every I don't know four stitches or so that way that it makes sure to get attached to the rest of the edging and you're going to take and continue your 20 up and then you're going to do that same five loop uh, pico that I showed you and anchor it down and then you're going to do the 20 down the other side make sure that you anchor it to the side closest to the one you're working on that way that it is not its own independent little floppy thing um, the only problem with these kinds of corners is that they're prone to stretching because there's nothing in the middle to hold them um, from flopping around and being pulled sideways by the edges so you can take and uh, after you get to the end you can always run what's called a thread bar um, so you would stitch into the side closest to you and then run it across to the other side and put it through a stitch and then you would take and stitch along that thread all the way back to the other side. And then you would take and work your thread through those uh, stitches to go up a little bit um, and then you would cross again and then stitch your way back to the other side and then wiggle it back up a couple more uh, stitches and then throw it across again and then stitch your way back to where you were and so on and so on until you go all the way to the tip and then you can tie it off or you can run your stitches back down the other side so that it balances out and then tie it off at the very bottom um, and it'll kind of look like a leaf yeah. um, so you can either attach the sides by doing a chain in between which is what it's called when we do all of these little stitches like the first row and just chain your way across until it um, looks about right that it'll lay flat or if it's something that's going to be hanging on a dress or a shirt or something then make sure to get your uh, edges to lay flat. Now I'm going to show you uh, what you need to do if um, you are running out of thread. So you're going to want to try to end it as close as you possibly can to, the, uh, to an anchor point. Uh, that way, even if you have to undo what you were doing all the way to the last anchor point and trim it off there, that way that you, uh, you're starting with a fresh thread at a joining place. That way it's nice and strong because um, you can't really join on in the middle of doing stitches. It just doesn't work out very well um, unless you put a knot in it and then it's going to make it look kind of funky. 
So you're going to take and tie it off down here uh, where your uh, anchor point is, and then you're going to take and trim it off. And I'm going to use the same thread because I still have plenty of it, but um, you just leave it a knot like that, and I've left a small tail on it that I'll trim off. Uh, actually, I may just work it in. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to take my new thread and never ever make sure you never ever trim your uh, foundation thread it needs to stay the same um, if you take and run out of foundation thread somehow then just square knot onto it and continue using that same thread never ever trim it because if you do um, your entire work can come undone all the way to the last like few knots that you did and mess up the whole thing so keep your foundation thread and just trim your working thread and what you're going to do is you're just going to stitch it on to exactly where the knot is um, through that stitch right there that it's knotted to you're going to take and leave a small tail so that you can uh, tie it go back through and you're going to take and anchor it just like you did with every other loop that you've been doing uh, double knots pull it through and get it nice and tight and then you're going to trim the little tail off that you had left behind that way that it's uh, not in the way. Oh, let me get that out of there. And, and then you're going to just continue your stitches just like you normally would. Now, I'm not far enough along to actually show you the corner, so I'm going to just uh, not do it. If you can follow my focal instructions that I've given you, um, doing the 20 stitches up, anchoring as you go, that way that it's attached to the side, and your pico, and then 20 stitches back down, anchoring to the other side, and then do your thread bars if you like, or not. Um, I feel like that's probably accurate enough, but um, this video is running a little bit long, so that should get you into doing your edging. If you ever have any questions, uh, once the library is back open to the public, I work at the Mount Holly Public Library. You can feel free to visit, and I can always take and take a few minutes out to take and show you how to do a corner if you like. Um, but yeah, so until then, thank you for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, and share uh, the videos, and uh, make sure that you are uh, looking at our Gaston County Public Library YouTube page because there's tons of library content out there just waiting for you to discover it. And thank you for watching. Bye!